Paul, girls' night out. Your wife is on a a one night excursion, two night excursion. I think it's wine country. What's uh, yeah? She sure is. It's, what's uh, happening it's, there? Are you enjoying this time home to yourself, or it's, what's it's the a story two night here? excursion? So she left on Friday midday, and she should be back fairly soon. This is midday on Sunday, so two day getaway. What if she doesn't come back? Well, uh, geez, I don't know. We'll uh, have to send out the search party. Um, so they went, did some wine tours or? Yeah, Niagara in the Lake, um, wine touring and looking at, um, it's antiques. No, it was, um, a lot of these like luxury homes are kind of decorated with like Christmas decorations and you could take tours of it. So that's, that was something oh, that they Oh, inside done. or just around the No, no, like inside. You, you actually take a tour inside the house and take a look at these. Oh, really? Decorated wow. homes, which I- well, this must Sounds be where. Why didn't you join? You must have had a lot of trouble not joining <laughs> that trip. I mean, decorations in the house, Christmas lights in the house. Yeah, but okay, they put up their Christmas decorations. I have a vested interest in pe- people that don't put up their Christmas decorations. They're the ones that I have to knock on the door and say, "What the hell are you doing?" Okay, so so you're you're away. She's away, or she's away. Um, what do you do with yourself? You're you're home with your son. I take yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. No. Are you guys doing stuff like boys' night stuff or nothing too what's, exciting? What's going that's on? For sure. Uh, yeah, just I don't need a vacation from her, and I'm sure she's going to listen to this this episode and and uh, you know be uh, appreciative of my comments. But uh, yeah, well, I, a vacation's I a big word. I mean, it's yeah, nice like to have time apart. I think yeah, I know, and you get to enjoy true. it when they're back. Absence makes the heart grow fonder, but. Um, yeah, you know, it, it's it's her turn to to get away for a weekend because she hasn't really. She knows she wanted to get the hell out of Dodge and have some fun <laughs> with her friends. Yeah, <laughs> take a vacation. Mm-hmm. It's not like she's going to Vegas or something for five days. Anyone who goes for to Vegas for five days, there should be some serious investigations yeah, into what yeah, they're doing there. There's definitely got to be stories that are that uh, that stay in Vegas. But now in this case, yeah, I can't imagine there's a whole lot of excitement going on in Niagara on the Lake, um, or so you think. Yeah. But no, like we, we've, I've had my share of, of getting away, you know, whether it's like a couple of days on a business trip or, you know, you and I, when we got out to, uh, to Windsor a few months back. Um, yeah. So yeah. The Windsor episode yet to be released. Yeah. Yeah. The mystery, mystery continues. Um, so yeah, it's good for her to, to have that weekend away. And I'm, I'm glad she did that. Now, a lot of guys, when their wives are away, the place tends to get a little bit, you know, the pizza boxes are strewn about, the the dishes are piling up in the sink. Uh, it's not looking good. And that that last couple hours before the wife returns, it's a mad chaos to get things cleaned up. I would bet if I was to come to your house right now, it's as spotless, clean as it always You're is. You're right, right, right. Yeah. You're, I I'm, knew it. I'm not, I'm not a messy guy. I just, I have... Obsessive compulsive when it comes to like mess and I've heard junk and stuff I've like seen that. It. Yeah, I, I keep a nice clean house, so there'll be no now, weird I'll surprises want, when she comes home. I want an honest answer. If it was the other way around and you were the one gone and she coming back, would you? Does she, is she just as clean and neat as you, or would, might it be a little bit out of sorts? And that you're the guy that keeps it all together. No, no, she does a good honest job. answer. No, no, honest answer. She does a good job. I, I wouldn't. I don't that's have any rare. concerns that, coming home and finding the house in a complete disaster. That's that's no. She, we're we're both on the same page when it comes to you know tidiness and cleaning up the house and stuff like that. That's rare. Yeah. I think I think most families one is good and one isn't so good or. One is really bad and one is really good. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't think you get a lot of both being really good at it. But yeah, what about all right? What about for you? Because you know, you you do a lot of traveling and and you know, it's used to yeah, yeah. All of the place is always clean, and spotless when I'm. I mean, it's much easier to keep this place clean when I'm not around. And yeah, it, I would be that guy, that the guy scrambling to get things cleaned up the last. It yeah. wouldn't be pizza boxes piled up dirty. I don't like that kind of mess. Mm-hmm. I would, keep, but, and I don't like dishes necessarily piling up, but I, I definitely would have to spend a, a while cleaning up and tidying if I was here by myself for yeah. two or but three that, days. But that's when you get yeah. the kids to help you out. You know, they're at an age where they, well, force them. They should be. Them. Yeah. Get at an age where you threaten him to help to clean up the house. I'll edit that part out. <laughs> yeah. All right. We got some topics here. Uh, Tim Horton's drive throughs You've been recently, what, experiencing fr- some frustration with Tim Horton drive throughs Yeah. Oh, my God. So, uh, so frustrating with, I don't know what, what you've experienced with Tim Horton's. And I'm not a huge, well, 
I'm not a, a is this going to be a first world problem? Yeah, probably a first world problem. Um, yeah, usually I go to Tim Hortons maybe once a day, maybe once every other day. Um, I, I frequent there enough to say I'm a fairly regular, semi regular customer. And okay, I've just found that over the last, well, maybe like the last few weeks, I've noticed especially is the fact that, um, the service through the drive through is just terrible. Like the number of times I've gone through the the Tim Hortons lineup and they get your order wrong or, you know, you, you go to place your order and nobody comes to the speaker box. Like that happened to me the other day where I went to get a, a coffee and, you know, on, on the speaker, there is absolutely nothing going on. I waited for like five minutes. So I just drove up to the window and I said, I want to order a coffee. Nobody took my order. You know, it's just, it, I don't know, maybe again, yeah. You just like skipped the, the speaker part and just went right up to the yeah, window? Yeah, I went right up to the window because it's like, if you're not going to take my order within the four or five minutes that I'm waiting there, then obviously- Four or five minutes? Really? That long? Yeah, I gave I gave him an opportunity. It's not like I'm That's Mr. Impatient time. here, but I think I had- If a it right... was 30 seconds, I'd say you should probably calm down. Yeah, but, yeah. No, but, no, it, it takes yeah, a lot to piss me off, but you know, I just find my, my fuse is getting shorter and shorter when it comes to, to Tim Hortons. And you know, all in all, like I'd say even- And Christmas lights. Yeah, Christmas lights. No, but like fast food, um, there, I, I know everyone, well- there's this the COVID excuse to say, oh, you know, we're short staffed and all of that stuff. But it, it's that excuse is getting tired. That is you know, a it's, lot it's, of the excuses. We, yeah. We're th- year three almost into COVID, and you can't keep using that excuse to say, you know, we're short staffed, blah, blah, blah. Like it's, it's not the customer's responsibility to have to absorb that. It, it's management. And I think in this case, you know, for a lot of Tim Hortons franchises, you have. N- you know, non-existent, um, you know, management that just, you know, either don't care or as long as the, the profits keep coming in, but it's, it's a very frustrating thing to, to deal with. And, you know, I think we've touched on this in prior episodes where, you know, the whole COVID effect and supply chain issues and, and having to, to, to deal with those, um, you know, those annoyances and everything. But, you know, in this case, I'm just getting really, pissed off with this absolutely terrible, terrible service that you're getting from Tim Hortons. You don't get it from Starbucks. Starbucks is, is good. Maybe they pay their staff a little bit better. I think it just Maybe. it comes down to, to training as well. And, and it's hard to, to lose your cool and, and blow up at, at the staff members because it, it's it's just lack of training. It's lack of training. And, and that's is where management has to take responsibility, in my opinion. There's also lack of quality, I think, yeah. out there too. Quality people, like, um, you know, I talked about this in a previous episode about Jap- Japan and how the service levels there are so high. Um, there's just, I don't know how much of it's training versus just the the, the people themselves, but um, people that just have a feeling of, of wanting to do well and serve well, I don't know what they're being paid. And, and that shouldn't be an excuse not to provide good service, but mm-hmm. I expect that's part of the issue. Uh, I will say one thing that's really frustrating for me at a drive through is when you go up and they have that pre-recorded thing. It's like, welcome to Tim Hortons. Please wait a moment while we're gathering the time to serve you or yeah, whatever. Yeah, it's a new thing as well. Yeah. I hate it when it gets cut off midway. Why? Because when you want to like, hear the voice? <laughs> well, I just don't. I, it's like so obvious that it's like this recording and stuff. You know, it's a, it's, it's, um, uh, Welcome to Tim Hortons. Uh, can I take your order, please? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Welcome to Tim Hortons. Can I take your order, please? Yeah. <laughs> and then you're like, uh, yes. Excuse- Hello? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All that awkwardness. Yeah, and, it's uh, definitely awkwardness for sure, yeah. And, they can- and often it's speaking too fast. Maybe this is the training. Speaking too quickly, you can't mm-hmm. hear. Like, I've there's a few times I feel like the grumpy old man. Yeah. When I was like... Pardon? Can't hear what you're saying. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. Like none of us want to be like the grumpy old man, but they force us into that. You know, the, I do. It's I their do fault. Feel, yeah, it's their fault that I turn into the the grumpy old bastard. Okay. Recent development in in Brampton, the city of Brampton has banned political signs, like supporting a candidate that's running for election. It's banned 
putting these signs on private property. So when we have election time, we will see people that put their local, whoever it is, MP, MPP, counselor. It'll there'll be a sign on some people's lawns saying that you know, vote counselor Ainsley or whatever for ward counselor number nine or whatever. The recently they just passed in Brampton. You're not allowed to put these signs on your lawn anymore. So what's going on in Brampton here? Like last episode, we talked about the fireworks ban. And now, There's a lot of fireworks going on in Brampton. Yeah, yeah, no pun intended. And now they're going political on about and- political signs, which I don't, I don't get this. Um, yeah, I think it's stupid. It's it's on private property, and we touched on this the last episode about the the fireworks on your private property. You should have the right to do what you want to do. You know, maybe there's a well, well hold to on a certain a extent, but. When it comes I to can't start a, a a fireworks factory on my no no but my if property or a, a brothel or what's wrong with a the brothel? There's damn it! I was hoping for a brothel. Anyway, well here, getting back to the election signs. Let's, let's stay focused here. You know, if I feel like putting up an election sign on my lawn, then I should have the right and the freedom to do that. It's my personal property. So personal property, you 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 shouldn't be able to tell people well. In theory, you sh- I was kind of caught myself there in that you shouldn't be able to tell people what to do on their personal property. But then again, if my neighbor were to park his car on his lawn and have engine parts all over the place, then yes, I would have or something to say about that. Or a big boat or an RV. Yeah. Or- but yeah, political. What about, a, what about a law that allows, that forces you to put Christmas lights up? Well, hey, now that's a different story. That that should be in place. You know how I feel about Christmas lights. <laughs> but Well, some of the reasons they stated that they don't want these signs are environmental reasons, that this is uh, bad for the environment, possibly to make it more of a level playing field that, uh, you know, according to this, it says that uh, the the proliferation of signage causes visual clutter and driver distraction. Um, this would help mitigate the environmental impact of signage and reduce costs. No, that, so I don't buy that's, that. That's, that's, that's some of the method. That, that, that's bullshit. I've I've worked well, on political. It is visually, it's pretty cluttered when you see these corners full of no, all these yeah. stupid no, signs. No, I, yeah, I I agree with having restrictions. That's public property. Yeah, I, I agree with having restrictions in place on on public property because yeah, especially during municipal elections where you have a lot of candidates out there. You know, they yeah, made you, rules. They have to take those signs down. Like I think within like you probably know this, like a certain yeah, number of hours after forty eight hours or something like that, or even less. They seem to go quick now. Yeah. But yeah, for especially municipal elections where you have a lot more candidates, yeah, you do get a bit of sign pollution, but it's just for a few weeks. You know, the whole thing about environmental, that that's bullshit because all those signs get recycled anyway. They're all made out of like a, a like a, a plastic composite of some kind. Um, and a lot of candidates reuse their signs if they're running again, running for re-election. Right. Um, right. I don't know. I just think it's, it's an, it's unusual. I'm, I'm not really sure I see the benefit of it because you, signs still serve a purpose. Like you still want to know who your candidates are. Um, and yeah. especially municipal, yeah. like it's different for provincial federal because you, a lot of people will obviously kind of focus on the party more than the candidate, but you still need to know who your candidate is. So, I don't know. I just I have a problem well, with with them saying that you can't have it on your personal property. If I want to put an election sign on my lawn, then I should have the right to do that. And I I do put signs on my lawn sometimes in various elections, and I I've I've put signs up in the past, and so do. Do you look at neighbors. other people with different signs and judge them? <laughs> no, based I, on their political candidate that they're uh, supporting. No, no. You know, I I if not at all. No, well, because the way I look at it is that. I'm I'm a big proponent of of I guess political participation in the sense that I don't care who you vote for as long as you have a reason to vote and you you participate in the process. I my problem I have a bigger problem with people that don't vote at all. You know we've talked about low voter turnout in in some of the uh, municipal elections that type of thing. Um, so you know I don't care who you vote for just vote. And, you know, I will never judge someone by the sign that they have in their, their front lawn, but you should have the right to put that sign up. So again, I don't know, uh, Brampton city council is going on a, on a tangent here. I don't know what's, what's next. Um, they do say that these signs can sometimes attract hateful and racist graffiti. Uh, Mitzi Hunter, she's actually from our area, uh, said that, uh, she had a number of signs that were, uh, had racist and hateful graffiti, 
on some of her actual election signs. Um, if Toronto, yeah, and, and that these signs can go up 25 days before election day in Toronto doesn't say anything about when they have to come come off. But uh, okay, so for you, it's about get out and vote. Um, I can have a sign on my lawn and uh, stop stop telling me what I can do and not do on my property. I heard a commercial the other day. It was uh, somebody who was shopping for Christmas and they said, oh, I've got sneakers for my brother. I have a new new stereo for my sister-in-law. And I'm thinking, wait a second here. Who who is buying all this stuff for people? Like the the Christmas list this woman listed off probably was worth somewhere around a thousand dollars of Christmas gifts for her kids, her brother in law. Mm-hmm. Her uh, is this all just marketing bullshit that these they they try to create this image that others are out there with big shopping lists and you should be too. And here's you come to our store and you can mm-hmm. get all your needs met. Yeah, I, I've observed that too. I think there's a commercial. I think it's the source. Or one of those, or Best Buy, or one of one of those electronic stores where, you know, they have some person that's buying like video game systems, and you know, everyone gets an iPad and all of that kind of stuff. Yeah. Meanwhile, the shopping list is like, you know, in the thousands of dollars. Um, yeah, it, it's a bit. I don't know. It, it's the whole expectation of of several hundred dollars being spent on each person, kind of, you know, fuels that that um you know that whole marketing ploy um yes. you know e- even the commercials where you see people giving cars for christmas you know like you see the 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 brand new shiny car in the driveway with the bow on top like really yeah i don't know hey to some people maybe that is their christmas and but sure yeah i don't know it's uh yeah it is a bit irritating at times when you see that because it's it sort of I don't know, maybe, maybe kind of promotes the, the greed and the materialism behind Christmas. Like all, that's all, all that's what it yeah, is. All, yeah. All that, all that it is that, that we hate about Christmas is, you know, the materialistic aspect of it. And that's the material, the materialistic aspect is what creates the stress over Christmas in the sense that people have to go out and shop and then, you know, put themselves way into debt by spending way too much money and stuff like that. So, so I want to ask you, who is like, what does your Christmas gift look list look like? How far out does it go? Because mine's really short. Mine's immediately like our kids. Uh, my wife and I really don't exchange Christmas gifts every year, um, and that's it. It doesn't go in. Oh, and then we have a secret Santa on my, my wife's side of the family, so we buy for one family member on my wife's side. And then on my side, we don't exchange gifts like with my parents or my sister or anything like that. Oh, and we do the kids. We, we buy for the other, the kids, but that's it. Yeah. my list. How far out does your list go? My list is fairly short as what well. What are you buying your wife's brother's distant sister's <laughs> yeah. re- uh, cousin? Like my wife and I, we, we do exchange gifts, but we, we do put a spending limit on it. Um, do you get, do you get bent out of shape about gifts, buying gifts? Cause that's another topic is, or do you, are you excited? You can't wait to go out and get that gift. Like, how does that, um, how's that for you? No, I, I don't mind it. It's, um, you know, it, it depends on, on the person, I guess. Like I, I exchange gifts, you know, I, I buy gifts for my mother, um, you know, and, you know, we buy for some of the nieces and nephews and stuff like that. But all in all, it's not a huge list. Or if there is sort of periphery people, it's just like a, a a smaller gift, like under twenty dollars, that type of thing. Nothing that. So how many people would there be that you would have to buy for? Ooh, um, probably under ten, I would say. Um, that's an extensive list. Mine's yeah. like four. Okay. Yeah, so that's quite. You're getting out there. But, you're. But you're keep uh, in mind that it's a lot of it could be just gift cards. Like it's, you know, a lot of those people still, like. You know, I'd say at least half those people would be a true gift gift card, and it could be like a LCBO gift card or. Is a gift card an acceptable gift only for certain types of people? Like your wife, I'm assuming you wouldn't give her. A no, gift card. I wouldn't give my wife a gift card as her only gift. But you know, for like a. a but you might give her one as a gift, but just not be the only gift. Yeah, and I've done that before. Like give her like a Starbucks gift card or something, just as kind of like really? an extra thing. Um, you guys are sharing the expenses anyway, so yeah. doesn't that does that make sense? Is that like what what's that well, all just, about? It's more just like a smaller, like a 
quote unquote, a stocking stuffer gift, I suppose. But it, symbolic. Yeah, almost. symbolic. But I wouldn't be like, here, honey, here's a $200 gift card, go nuts type of thing. You know, it's like, so a gift card is something you would give to like nieces and nephews or. Right. You know, because like, they don't want yeah, I've, you to choose their gifts for them. Yeah. And, you know, it's one of those things where, where gift cards are becoming more and more acceptable. You know, maybe five, 10 years ago, you know, the whole thing, oh, I don't want to give someone a gift card. It's so impersonal. But now I think everyone wants a gift card because people are tough to buy for. Like even, you know, even for me, like my wife has asked me, you know, what do you want for Christmas? And I've kind of have to scratch my head a few times and think, okay, what do I want? Because mo- I know. We're, we're, we don't, that's why we don't buy stuff for each other. Yeah. Like most things, if, if something we need, we just kind of go out and buy it or anyway. Um, so it's really just kind of like treats or I don't know, just something different or unique that you, you might ask for, for, uh, for Christmas. But, um, yeah, I think gift cards, like keep it simple, take away the stress, you know, that way you, you can definitely cap your spending at a, at a desired amount to say, okay, I'm going to spend X amount of dollars on this person, gift card done, move on, keep it simple. The other day I was uh, coming back from lunch and I saw a Burger King bag on a colleague's desk. Uh, the bag was grease stained. It was, uh, there was a, a jumbo sized Coke or, or soft drink uh, can, a container next to it. Uh, it was, the bag was crumpled up. And, and I have to say, I judged that person when I saw that getting, greasy bag of fast food. Getting a bit judgy. Very judgy. Yeah, getting judgy, are we, huh? Um, yeah, okay. Do, who goes out and buys like something like that and has it for lunch okay. and eats it in the office? Everyone's allowed a cheat day. I don't know. Maybe he was just having a bad day or something and he just had to have that Burger King. Okay, you know what? My, my thoughts on this. If, if that person was eating Burger King and McDonald's every single day, then yes, there would be. I'd have. I'd be a little judgy on that. I'd be like, "Hey, what the hell? What 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 are you, what are you doing here? You're like polluting your body." If it's like a one time thing, you know, like a a weekday, like a you're having a, a moment of weakness. It's a Friday. It's like, ah, what the hell? I feel like eating bad today. Then okay, fine. We're all guilty of that. But I don't know. Every single day. But I wouldn't. You, hey, you and I. You and I have worked together with with colleagues that you know when we we joke about this they like their fast food yeah they like their fast food there are certain people that that you know who will remain nameless but every single day at lunchtime you saw the mcdonald's bag or the burger king bag on their desk and it was almost like clockwork and it's like oh god what what are you doing man here's the thing and maybe this is more my problem than someone else's if i was to decide today's the day i'm going to burger king I ain't bringing the bag back. I'm doing it off in the, like, I'm going to go two food courts, two buildings over, eat my, mm. guiltily eat my fast food, make sure nobody sees me, and then I come back to the office. Yeah, you know, that's a good point as well. You know, but how is it any more offensive than someone who eats fish? You know, like pe- people that microwave fish in fish the lunchroom and, and, and it stinks up the lunchroom and stinks up the work area. Well, that's different. Yeah, I, I know what you mean. Still if, bad. If, Still, I know what you. It's it's it's, it's it can cause issues, but yeah. but yeah, I, I know what you more, mean. If, for that case, more about the health aspects. If, if you're feeling a little bit guilty over that bag of greasy food that you're about to consume, then yeah, maybe just eating it in the food court and you know keeping it away from you know bringing it and displaying it on your desk and you know having like the the big greasy bag on your paperwork and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, I I I, I would agree with you on that one. Where maybe you. you don't necessarily dis- display it to your coworkers, but yeah, no, it, it is comical. Just certain people where it's like, there's no, no shame. Like they just don't care what the hell they eat. And every single day you got that greasy bag of crap on their desk. Weird news story. Uh, Buddhist temple left empty after all monks get busted for doing meth. Wow. All right. <laughs> Is, was that was that was the meth part of their religion? Or was it for, or were they were they seeking a tidy profit? Well, it says apparently even pious monks aren't beyond having earthly vices. At least that's if a recent outlandish incident from Thailand has is anything to go by. A small local temple in the 
Pechabun province of north central Thailand is now deserted. All of its monks have been kicked out because they got busted for doing meth. And doesn't Thailand have some pretty stringent um, punishments over drug possession or drug manufacturing? Like, am I, or am I thinking of other countries? Well, Singapore obviously is the biggest one. Uh, you're right. Asia does typically have serious crimes or penalties for drug use. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure about Thailand as much, but uh, it says here that um, police officers forced the temple's about abbot forced the temple's abbot because that's a part of the temple uh, and four monks. Oh, the four, the abbot might be like the head of the. the the temple. Sorry, I didn't research that. Um, they they forced the temple's abbot and four monks to take drug tests on November 28th. We couldn't find reports on why the drug tests were necessary, but clearly there were some serious suspicions if the cops thought them appropriate. Now, the writ- writing style of this article sounds a little bit amateurish. It doesn't sound like a... This came from a site called Audie, O-D-D-E-E. So it's perhaps not, uh, you know, like being sourced like some of our other stories come from other sources and someone aggregates them Mm -hmm. but uh they say call it methotation (laughs) following the drug tests all of the monks have been defrocked that is to say they've had to relinquish the distinct orange robes for the buddhist monks are famous for consequently they also lost their status as holy men these new unholy men also got promptly ferried off to a rehab facility to uh kick their drug drug habit Hmm. Yeah, that is pretty interesting, but isn't, well, I know they're not Buddhist monks, but wasn't it monks that invented beer? Like back in like the 13th yeah, century? Yeah, Trappist. Trappist monks, yeah. Yeah, so those monks get into all sorts of weird stuff, don't they? Yeah, well, we can thank them for <laughs> yeah. for good beer. But uh, apparently it says monks committing crimes is often reported in Thai media outlets, but it isn't a recent social trend. Um Reports of monks getting arrested for money laundering, drug and alcohol abuse, sexual assault, drug trafficking, and even murder wow. have become a weekly tradition Jeez, in the country. These guys are badasses. Like, who would have thought? I think you, you would figure like a Buddhist monk would be, you know, pretty quiet and unassuming, kindly, gently, kindly gentle soul. old soul. But man, apparently not. These guys are like bikers. <laughs> they said there was a monk famous for his claims of omniscience was stopped while driving drunk. He ran a red light with his pickup truck while carrying dozens of methamphetamine pills. Uh, another monk got uh, got caught consuming meth. Not only uh, that, he not only that he also sold the drug to local youths. Jeez, the article goes on and on and on. So uh, that's that's a story happening out of Thailand. So a weird news when, story when you out, go in, out of Thailand. When you go into Thailand, never mind the back alleyways. Just stay clear of the monks. Apparently. <laughs> Or if you're looking for some supply, head straight to them. Yeah, for a good time, call the monk. All right. Well, uh, good catching up as always, Paul, and uh, looking forward to connecting on our next episode. Absolutely. Yeah, we should do. Um, we should do a Christmas episode. Yes, yeah. famous Christmas episode. Yeah, Christmas episode. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? I can't hear you. Can you hear me? No, you can't. Oh, good timing. I lost Paul's audio, so I'll say goodbye on behalf of Paul and I. And uh, we'll see you on our next episode of We Talked About This. You can always uh, reach us at we talked about this 99 at gmail.com with topic ideas. Uh, Want to be a guest? Let us know. We will get back to you uh, as soon as we can and hopefully have you on a future episode.